how are you? I'm really good. What about you? I'm I'm fantastic. I, I, it's such a privilege to be able to speak to you. So so first of all, thank you for giving me your time today. <laughs> thank you for coming with your time to me. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, uh, thank you for making such a beautiful film. Uh, oh. I was I was really blown away by it. The, the the performances and the nuances of behavior, and it's just such a such a terrific, vivid piece of work. And so I guess my first question to you is um, what excited you most about tackling this this material, which has been around since, I believe, 1888 from, from Strindberg? Well, I, I think, you know, it lends itself very much to our time when uh, we don't talk about class anymore, but we know more than anyone that the class difference is so much bigger than before. Those who have everything, there's such a few percentage of us, and and those who have nothing, there's such a large percentage. And and those who are violent, some are violent because they have no other way than to be violent, just like uh, maybe John in the movie becomes somewhat violent too. And and also, you know, we say there's no difference between man and a woman, as if <laughs> at least women and I think men also as if we don't know that there is a vast difference and uh, and it is uh, acknowledged very much by women and sometimes by men, sometimes men in a violent way, sometimes women in a victimized way, or sometimes because they are treated like uh, less than valuable. And mm. so uh, I felt, although it says it in different ways, uh, Miss Julie, I wouldn't do it in of today because then you'll see a pointed finger. I wanted to do it at that time with two people and they seem to be like maybe ordinary people can never overstep the difference in class, the difference in upbringing, the the difference in uh, different sexes. And I think it's an incredible play and you know a lot of great famous writers say that Strindberg is uh, one of the most important uh, writers there ever has been although that is not so well known well i'm i'm so glad to to hear that answer because as i was watching it that's exactly what i was struck by because a lot of people when when you adapt or kind of remount uh, a classic like this that's been around and has been done several times over the years, um, the, the question automatically arises, well, how is it relevant to today? And, and usually I think that that's not really a fair question because if, if it's recognizably human, I think it's relevant. Uh, but this one, uh, I was really struck by those themes of, of class and gender and how recognizable they are to what we're living with today. Exactly. And and I don't think that Julie stopped really only because of the class. I don't I think she's even unavailable to be thinking that way. I think you know her her dilemma is that I don't think she can reconcile with any kind of human being because she's living in this uh, horrendous pain and the feeling of non-existence and the feeling of not being seen and so. And I I think uh, he, in a similar way, I don't think that he ever felt class so strongly as when it uh, awakens the anger within, within yeah. him. Because he wants to belong to that class. He wants to be one of them and he takes delight in that one day he will be, and then the moment she comes down in his kitchen and starts to order him around, you know, anger starts to stir in him. And uh, I've seen performances, you know, where he's this big macho man, and, you know, he's uh, answering her in a macho way, and so with him you only see this man who stiffens more and more, and feels like a little child following her orders in his own kitchen, which he thought he was deciding of, and he knows he has no power. And uh, he becomes like any man that I know when, you know, uh, you question his uh, control, and so he becomes uh, five years old, and he can become yeah. very, very violent. 
But I think if you see it, as I said, as as a movie about hundreds of years ago, 150 years ago, you don't feel there's a pointed finger because you mm-hmm. feel today we have no class. Today there's no difference between a man and a woman, and I think there's never been such a great difference between a man and a woman. And sometimes we show the difference. Well, it sound, it sounds like you were very much in line with Strindberg's intent uh, when he wrote originally wrote the play. But in adapting the play, was there ever a moment when your desire to put your own unique kind of stamp on the material uh, r- kind of uh, ran counter to oh, the writer's intent? Oh, absolutely. Because I wasn't completely in line, because he has a very strong forward to the play, how much he dislikes women and what he feels about women. And I think you can also see that in the play, and that's fine. That's the man's voice, and that's what he chooses to do. But I, as a woman, uh, I don't agree on that, and I, I wanted to come from another place and tell, did you ever think that she may be thinking this, although you don't let her say it, but maybe she was thinking, I'm worth nothing, you know, nobody sees me, nobody listens to me, and because it is an adaption, I have the right, I have the right to say those things, uh, and uh, <laughs> and it's an ad- adaption, and I don't go against his words, but I, I, I allow a woman's uh, sound to be Mm. Heard and sometimes because I'm a woman, I can see when the man gets uh, that feeling that they are commanding him and they are taking the place he feels he should have. You know, he doesn't necessarily become violent; he becomes horribly insecure, and that turns out that he he will show horror and anger in a in a different way. So he gets lines too that. Strindberg didn't give him, but maybe this is what he was thinking. And uh, because I've seen many plays uh, of Miss Julie, two on films, and they have been made by by men. And I believe a woman's voice should should come in, and a woman's voice came in here. I, I, lo- I love this movie, Miss Julie, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about your work with Mr. Bergman. And uh, you know, I know that. Your both of your legacies are so um, uh, intertwined, um, and I, I, that must be an extraordinary gift because you have so many of the great classics of cinema that you've appeared in under his direction. But it, has that ever been a burden to you as well at any point in your life? No, not really a burden. There, there were some times, and you know, I actually did say to him, you know, they always ask about you and and so <laughs> and then he said don't you understand Liv you are my Stradivarius and I thought that was such a compliment I'd rather be the Stradivarius of Ingmar Bergman than uh, <laughs> than not to have worked with him I think that's a compliment and I learned so much from him and I learned from the trust and I learned from the uh, aloneness of my creativity and that for a director and actor to work together, it's two creativities that is uh, part of it, and they have to go together and and with the trust in each other. And so, uh, I, I, I'm 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 so grateful. I've had such a rich life, and I have to say about the actors, uh, if he ever showed me trust, I have to say that three actors like I had. Mm. Seeing them being so creative, knowing things that I didn't know before I said camera, and suddenly I knew so much more about Julia than I ever knew before. I am so in awe of these actors, and uh, very often, you know, the directors get so much acclaim or anger, but very often acclaim for what really is is the actors and and I am moved and so happy with those uh, three actors I I worked with and the fourth actor which is that incredible castle that we mm. that we worked in so uh, I I'm 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 very fortunate well it it's an extraordinary movie and uh just as a as a movie fan 
my whole life I've been a great movie fan, obviously, and I, I just have to thank you for playing such a meaningful role in that life. So uh-huh. thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you.